quick updates coming up here. Uh, one for the house rehab and then one for the subdivision of the lot. So for this house, um, actually for I think any house before a certain time frame in Seattle, you need to check for asbestos in the building before the city lets you uh, do even any demo work because uh, they don't want all that dust and debris getting into the atmosphere and potentially contaminating you or your neighbors or the air. So we closed, took us a while to close. There's just a bunch of noise around the process. Um, but we closed, I want to say about a week and a half ago, and we're set to do some demo um, starting the 19th. And so part of that process um, was figuring out what parts of the house were need to be uh, abated that have asbestos in it, and then ones that we can demo uh, the normal way, just tearing things out without uh, a, the protection that you would need for asbestos abatement. And so that was a new process for me. And then the past remodel I've done, um, we didn't. The house was newer, so we didn't have to do any asbestos. This is a 1937 house so it's pretty old um, and I'll start with the outside here the 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 horizontal siding here we believe is original and actually I peeled a piece of that back and there was some tar paper back there still that was brittle but it was still in place um, and um, all of that horizontal siding is asbestos it's almost like a fiber cement uh, to some extent but the top part is cedar and I'm not sure if I'm just gonna have them rip that out. I mean, they're gonna rip it out, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna salvage that uh, or not. Uh, one piece that I am thinking about when I do this is on the gable ends here, I'm gonna have them keep that trim and we'll set that aside. I don't think I'll use that same trim, but I can use that as a template uh, for my new trim or uh, when I'm measuring some other things that may go up in that gable. Uh, that, that gable fascia and soffit area. So we all we know that this whole exterior needs to be uh, abated uh, appropriately. And the process for the interior is um, let me get to a picture just trying to show the general interior. So this is the kitchen. This is the living room. This is a li pretty low ceiling here. And so what they do is they'll come in here and they'll take samples for example, of, you know, out of the ceiling here. That's one place they, they took a sample from, and that was, I think, right about over here. And then they took one from, I think, this back room, and there's another room behind the kitchen here uh, that they took some, some samples from. And then the kitchen, they took uh, this, this tile wall they were concerned with, tile in general in the kitchen, and so they just popped off a piece of that and we'll test that area and then underneath this register we pulled up some of this vinyl flooring uh, to test for that and so all in all uh, uh, and then up in the attic we looked at the uh, this is like a pellet material um, it's like granular and it's kind of gray and white you can see it a little bit better here but that is vermiculite, and when they mine that, um, if there's an asbestos vein next to the area that they mine the vermiculite, um, that could contaminate the vermiculite uh, as well. That's what I was told from the the asbestos uh, one of the asbestos teams. And the tricky thing with uh, the vermiculite is, as he said. We could take 40 samples and all the samples could come back negative and the 41st sample comes back plus, you know, plus more than 1% and that's kind of the threshold for what you need to abate asbestos. So if it's 1% or below, um, you can consider that standard uh, demo work. Uh, I forget the classification, but you don't need to, any protective equipment outside of normal protective equipment and no special precautions for that. If it's above that, um, you have to take the precautions 
notify the city that you're doing asbestos abatement, give them 10 days notification, um, and then you have to apply stickers to every place that you um, did asbestos abatement. So in the vermiculite, um, we were lucky that I think he did four total samples. One came back at 1% and all the rest came back negative. So we don't have to abate that. Uh, when if it's above, if that one was above one percent, you have to abate it all. It doesn't even matter that it, it let's say it happened in this back corner and they pulled it that sample from there. Um, you couldn't just like, oh, we'll just abate this area because that's the only area that came back hot. Um, you have to abate all of it, you have to consider it all contaminant for the ceiling here in the living room. Um, what over here, it was, this was an interesting one because this, some of the, uh, plaster material, uh, came back at 2%. And so, uh, I don't know all the details. Um, I'm not an expert in this area, obviously, but after you, if, if you get a rating of 2%, um, they do something that's called a point count. And it's like they magnify the sample by X factor, uh, and then they do a repoint and they recount the asbestos um, in there. Um, and if that comes back at less than, or 1% or less, then they can then classify that as um, okay. And so that that's what happened here on the ceiling is that uh, every that this came back at two percent, and we had them do a re repoint count of that, and that came back at one percent after, so we didn't have to abate the ceiling. For the the areas that we have to abate, obviously, are the um, the exterior. There is the uh, right here at this register of this vinyl floor. Uh, I believe the mastic came back as rated as hot as, as containing asbestos. So what we have to do is pull up all that vinyl flooring. Um, you could theoretically leave the flooring there um, and tile or put hardwoods over it. Um, the team that I'm working with believe that they can keep the vinyl attached to the substrate and pull that all up as, as one. Um, otherwise it'd be very hard to remediate that. And then in this living room, underneath this carpet is another vinyl floor, but this vinyl floor under here is, is it's like a mat almost. Like it, it seems like it wasn't glued down or all the glue just became so bad that basically you can lift it up. So they're not worried about the abatement of that because it's basically, it's, it's already loose. Uh, so they just have to make sure it's, it's disposed of properly. <clears throat> And so I think once we get that done, um, and actually we're gonna demo the whole interior first, minus the floors and the exterior, and then I wanna get my head around the space in there and how to redesign some of that, and then we're gonna do the outside. I didn't wanna have the house completely um, naked, down to the studs everywhere. Um, I wanted to at least give the, the the appearances that nothing was happening inside, and if I was to take the exterior all apart, um, then you know it's, it'd be obvious that I was doing something. And I just you worry about squatters, you worry about people coming in. Um, if I have, if I leave any tools there or anything, um, I, I wouldn't want them getting poached. So that's where we are. Next week, starting the nineteenth, we'll do interior demo minus the abatement. Um, after that, we will start getting my head around layout, and then I go to IBS. And then when we come back from that, I will do more into the layout area and kind of walk through some of that process. So that's where we are with the rehab of the, of the house on this property. Thanks.